deep research tools give you the power to search the entire internet for a question of your choosing and get an incredibly detailed report that even has sources in line so that you can go and read them and verify whether or not that information is useful. Except you probably shouldn't trust them because they're almost definitely wrong. In the last month, OpenAI, Google, and Perplexity have launched their own deep research features, which allow you to ask a question of your choosing and have any of those tools scour the internet for sources to create a detailed report that has 30 plus sources and can be upwards of 4,000 words. In theory, this should be a total game changer for anyone who wants to learn more about a specific topic and doesn't have the bandwidth or the expertise to do the research themselves. In practice, it turns out a lot of that information might be wrong. If you don't know what deep research is, it is a bonus feature that ChatGPT, Google Gemini, as well as Perplexity currently have. And the idea is that unlike something like the search feature that Perplexity and ChatGPT already have, if you have a question that requires a lot of research or you want kind of a really in-depth answer, deep research will allow an AI tool to scour the internet for sources and create this really, really really high quality detailed report that also cites the sources that it's used in the process. In theory, this probably sounds like an awesome idea. One of the big problems that we run into with AI tools is the fact that they hallucinate all the time. I did a whole newsletter on this. You can follow me on Substack in the description, but essentially a hallucination refers to AI generated content that presents false or misleading information as fact. Now, this assumes that models output fact in the first place. That's just not what really happens. The fact that they output fact is kind of incidental, but you would think that the fact that these models can now dive into the internet and find all these additional sources might remedy that problem. In practice, that's not what happens and it might actually create more problems. And to understand why, let's talk about how deep research works. When you give a prompt to a deep research tool, what happens is that AI bots crawlers go through the internet searching for information that is relevant to the topic that you looked for. You can actually see in ChatGPT as well as Gemini's deep research process as it goes across the internet, searches for different things, starts looking at different sources, determines whether or not it's a source it wants to use, and collects them over time. The problem with this approach is that they can't access every website because these AI bot crawlers that are going through the internet are the same tools that scrape training data for these models from the internet. And as you may already be aware, there are a ton of websites that have blocked these bots from being able to access them because they don't want their information being used as training data. Why is that particularly problematic when it comes to deep research tools? Well, the types of web pages that tend to block their ability to be used as training data tend to be higher authority websites. So these are major media outlets, these are academic journals, these are industry specific proprietary information, things along that line. In fact, you can actually see as ChatGPT tells you what's happening in the deep research process, you can see it run into agent blockers and then try to get around them, usually by looking at internet archives and not necessarily be able to find that information and then try to search new topics in order to get around that to other sources. And most of the time it just can't access that information. What does that mean for the report that you end up getting? It means that the sources of information that end up being the ground truth, so to speak, of the output that the model returns to you are lower quality or at least skewed towards being lower quality because the types of websites that are less likely to block the ability for an AI crawler to scrape them for training data tend to be people who don't necessarily care. That tends to be SEO optimized content. So people who are trying to rank higher in search, that's usually for marketing reasons, which means that they want to sell you something. It's also very likely to be social media. So people talking anecdotally about different topics, it could be outdated sources. So even if you're looking at archives versions of something and you're able to access it, it may be completely out of date. And it's more likely to be things that were generated by another AI tool because you don't necessarily care whether or not your AI generated content ends up getting regurgitated back into the system as training data. This isn't to say that all of the sources that are going to be used for 
your report are necessarily all low quality, but it does mean that they are going to be disproportionately skewed in that direction. There is a way to potentially address this. Unfortunately, if you are using deep research, you probably can't. And that's because the best way to identify whether or not information in your response is true is to have domain expertise in that area such that you know better than the model necessarily would. If you're using deep research, my guess is that you don't because you wouldn't necessarily be relying on a tool like this in order to do this kind of research for you. You might source the articles yourself and throw it into ChatGPT and have it write a report, but particularly as someone in academia, if I want what is essentially a review paper on a topic, I will just go look up a journal with a review paper on the topic. And so what ends up happening is that a user who doesn't have domain expertise ends up asking for something where they can't identify whether or not the model has made an error. This can propagate misinformation. That misinformation ends up somewhere else on the internet. It gets reincorporated into the model as training data. And then another user asks a similar question from the similar domain, and we go round and round and round. If you've been on my channel before, you know that this is usually the point in the video where I tell you that you should not use a tool like this. I'm not going to say that here, and here's why. We've gone over the fact that these deep research tools don't necessarily have access to these higher authority sources of information. This particularly becomes a problem if the information that you're looking for is relatively niche and there just wouldn't be a lot on the internet about it and all that stuff is paywalled. But if there isn't a lot on the internet about it and all the stuff is paywalled, or if you know the higher authority sources in general are just paywalled regardless of how prolific that information is on the internet, you can't access it either nor might you have the ability to verify it because you don't have the domain expertise. To me, a lot of this feels very similar to people on the internet saying that I did research on a topic, and what they mean is that they did a Google search and then they read the first like three articles, although I guess AI overviews will be the new version of that, which is going to be the same problem. So if that's what you've already been doing, deep research is a more efficient way of doing that, certainly, and it will source more information, but it's overall not that dissimilar from what you might have already done. Well, I do want to say that I don't think it's a good idea to use this unless you have an ability to fact check your model response. And having talked to some of you, some of you are fact checking models by asking other models about whether or not a response is true. That's not fact checking. That's not how fact checking works. You can't have like Gemini fact check ChatGPT. That's, you can't do that. I just think that you need to take anything that you get out of deep research with like a decent amount of salt. I think it is worth doing your own preliminary Google search to see if you can access some of the information that's blocked because even though, like I said, a lot of the stuff that is blocking AI agents from being able to access it is also paywalled to actual people, a lot of it's not. And you could find the information yourself and I'm not actually endorsing this, but print out a PDF of it and then re-upload it back into the model. We're also not gonna get into like the climate impact of using things like reasoning models. That will likely be a video in the next week or two. I'm working with another YouTuber potentially on that. But when it comes down to it, I don't recommend that you use deep research until you watch this video. And I hope by watching this video, you are more likely to ask questions about how these models work in the first place, what might go into the responses and whether or not you should rely on them at all. Speaking of that, if you have other questions about AI that are specific to things that you're dealing with, you can send me a question and I will send you a video response. It's 25 bucks and you get 30 minutes of video back from me so I can do the digging for you. Some of the questions that I often answer are, I have concerns around privacy and specific tools. Can you recommend me a tool that does XYZ? What's the best way to use ChatGPT for research while maintaining accuracy? That's kind of what prompted this video and that newsletter. How can you set up and as ethical as you can get AI assisted content workflow. That's something I made a TikTok on recently, which was also prompted by someone who asked me that. And if you have a more specific question than that, you can apply to work with me one on one. I consult for professionals, individuals, small businesses, nonprofits, and people often end up being neurodivergent, likely because I am also neurodivergent. So I would love to see you either way. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see the climate footprint video. Having lots of fun with that. And let me know about your experience with deep research in the comments because I'm very curious. Bye.